Hey everybody, thank you for tuning in to Act 3. We are happy that you're here on this very fine summer day. I hope that you and your family have been enjoying yourself during this period. I know our Act 3 team, many of us are on vacation and so today's episode, I'm gonna have a candid conversation with one of my favorite people on the planet. Michelle Jarvis Wanaka is here and we are gonna talk about grieving gracefully, being curious and asking the question, what if? I hope you enjoy the program. Grab yourself a beverage. Let's get started right now. I'm sitting on the edge of love and happiness. Never experienced such a moment as this. So if you've got that good feeling in your body and you want to bring this moment to life, come with me. Well, hey everybody, it is wonderful to have you here. And I am delighted beyond compare because my dear friend, Michelle Jarvis Wanakut is here today. And we're talking about grieving gracefully and I give you permission to grieve your dog. So welcome to the program. Hey, Michelle, I am so happy you're oh, on the Act 3 set. So much fun. So, so much, much fun. fun. Such great team. Great team, great people. Yeah. It's the very best. It's exciting. You know, you and I have had many interviews together. We, you mm -hmm. know, we've talked on the radio lots of times. You've been on previous shows. But for our audience who may not know who you are or what you do, how about we give them a little bit of an idea of what, what it is that you've been doing with your world? Okay, well, I'm an animal communicator, yes. which is, just basically means that I'm able to hear, see, and feel what's going yeah. on for animals. I, I do the same thing for people, but I tend to keep it to animals. It's easier. It's um, beautiful. It's a beautiful service. Yeah. I'm an author, a public speaker. I owned a dog training company for 20 some odd years. I'm a holistic nutritionalist. So bringing all of this together to form an information outlet for yeah. people that are looking for information that they're just not finding. Exactly. They're just not finding. Yeah, and, and, and the reality is is that often people won't go looking for something until they find themselves in crisis uh, when it comes to their pet. And yes. so, you know, I know, as many of our listeners know, I had two dogs for a long, long time, Bobby Wilson and Kevin, my gorgeous and wonderful yeah. Jack Russells, who you knew very well. You're sweet. And when they passed over, it was a very difficult time for my family, for myself, to grieve the process of losing your dog. It's one thing to grieve a person, right? Yes, it is. It's an yeah. entirely different animal, pardon the pun, yeah. when yeah. we start talking about what it's like to grieve our past. So yeah. what, what, what actually, first of all, brought you into this work in the first place? Were you mm. seeing a lot of, of things happening or, or, or what was it? Well, of course, like I, you know, I have over 7,000 clients in my dog training right. you know, platform, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. One of my clients called me one day and she said, I'm, my dog passed. I'm in absolute pain. I don't know how to deal with this. My vacation's not working. My partner's worried about me. Yeah. I feel like I'm going to die. Yeah. Can you help me? And I, I responded by mm -hmm. saying, because you're asking, I must be able to. And, mm -hmm. and of course, I have education out the yin yang. Like I've been studying this kind of stuff for yeah. years and years long, and years long and years. Time. Mm -hmm. Not just coming from a, you know, like, yeah, sure. But I came from a curious point of view, and that's what I've learned about this work, is coming from a curious point of view mm -hmm. is absolutely mandatory. So she showed up with her whole family, believers, non-believers, and we just, just kind of went into whatever came through me. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Whatever came through me. So allowing myself to be a conduit of information for whatever's going to show up. And these people leave as this bonded family unit that are now peaceful and happy and have something to hang on to, whereas before they had nothing to hang on to. They yeah. were they were they were yeah. dog paddling, literally. Yeah. They were no. in pain. And and pain and when pain. it comes to an animal is is similar, I suspect, to grieving a person, but it's different. There's a there's a level of unconditional love that comes with our pets yeah. that doesn't 
you know, we don't really find in any other form of our lives. So I think that that was what really started you on the first book that you uh, oh, wrote. Yeah, 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 yes, so yes, let's yes, yes. I, let's talk about that first book a little bit. Yeah. And we, you know, we'll show this on the screen for people to see better. But you've created yeah. a full workbook and everything in regards to the grieving process Oof, yeah. for our animals. Yeah. Because I, like a lot of people that are watching right now, had that experience in my life where you get the the um, blanket statement diagnosis. Yes. You need to go home, put your dog to sleep now. She has blank. Yes. Right? Yes. So in that trauma and in that pain, I practiced what I knew to be true and did some deep breathing and drove yeah. her home and, and just got in this process of being present really present because these are our last moments and, and in those last moments you have to pay attention whether those last moments are a year you've got a diagnosis yeah. right or, or an inkling that your pet is you think something's wrong with them paying attention and being in the moment is the greatest gift to yourself and to the animal so within that I journaled I started yes. writing the crazy down like the stuff that you can't even say to people, you can probably maybe not even to a therapist, like the dark stuff, the deep stuff, the fear. Yeah. And I wrote it down and, and through her whole journey, right through to the other side, I just kept journaling and journaling. And seven or eight years later, I found it. Yes. I found my little, all my little pile of notes and I thought it was gonna be crazy talk, but it wasn't. It was the most beautiful, profound, honest piece of information that I knew I had to share with the world. And yeah. I knew I had to share it for my girl because I had an animal communicator tell me that her voice would ripple through the world. Yes, and there so, it is. There and it, it is. is rippling through the world yeah. with, I give you permission to grieve your dog. Yeah. It, that was our first, that was my first go-to when Bobby Wilson and Kevin mm. passed away. I had the ability to do a deep dive into the emotions that went with that. And, and literally yeah. knowing that these dogs came into my life at a very difficult time of my life. And they were with me for a good dozen years. And so mm -hmm. it was, it, it's important that we do take the time to grieve an animal, yep. a pet, because it, it's not just dogs, it's your cat, it's, it's horses, it's oh, birds, horses. it's like, yeah. it's all of the pet family. Mm -hmm. And through that journey, it gave me a strength that I, I didn't really realize that I had. It's been a couple of years since my girls have been passed on. Yeah. Uh, but then it, the sort of as I was coming up on the anniversary of that, you decided to surprise me again with yet another brilliant yeah. book, which yes. is Breathing Gracefully. And Breathing so I, I want to just talk a little bit about this book and spend a bit of time mm -hmm. unpacking it because in the book itself, you have a tremendous amount of little pieces of wisdom for yeah. people to review. And I want to go to the first one first. So okay. we're going we're, we're gonna to move into a piece of your writing, Michelle. Okay. I do not wish to butcher this, so please forgive okay. me if I make an Ready. error here, but <laughs> here we go. It, and and I, as you, we do these boxes, uh, you can look in this book and, do, and just basically pull anything at any time yes, and true. you'll hit what you're supposed to hit. Yes. Um, you have a box that says my guidance for you. Mm -hmm. Imagine if, if in every thought and memory you have of your pet, you're filled with overwhelming love and appreciation rather than guilt, loss, and grief. What if you could put aside all encompassing fear of loss and feel only the gain and the pride of sharing life with such highly evolved sentient being? What if you could bravely look at that beautiful, unconditional, loving animal companion in their eyes as they take their last breath? Mm -hmm. What if you could truly say, thank you, my friend? I'll watch for you. <laughs> now I'm getting shivers all over Me my too. body. It's so beautiful to hear uh, that. Thanks. You know, because it is, it's the what if. And it, as I said, what if? What if? What if? Yeah. What if? What does that mean to you? What if is permission to let your mind, to set your mind free? And to, yes. what if leaves room for us to have new information come in that has the ability to, I'm, I'm hearing the word satiate, yes. to, to, to relax, to calm, to make you happy, to bring peace, to bring joy yes. in a time that is so deeply personal that people don't even find or take the time to work through it or to navigate it or talk about it because it's just a dog or cat or a horse or a reptile or I'm, fish. I, I'm so happy that you said the justa. Because, just. because for, for many people, that's true. It yeah. is just a dog or just a cat. 
But for many people, that just uh, is that spirit, that soul for which we've put all of our truth, all of our belief, mm -hmm. all of our tears, you know, when you're going through difficult times. You know, I remember Bobby Wilson and Kevin being my love bugs on some of the loneliest days of my life. And so I, it's, it's more than that. Yes, it is. Yeah. yeah. It's so yeah. much more than that. And yeah. this is something that's absolutely imperative to give people permission to have the space to, to have that me too moment. Like I, yes. I hear people say, oh, reading these books, I feel like I'm not alone. I feel like I'm not crazy. I feel like I have a voice and yes. I feel like my feelings are warranted and have a place yes. and a space. So it just takes all of that out. And, and it also helps remove a lot of the guilt and a lot of the shame and the blame. Yes, you know, and I, I know for it to be true that grief comes in a million different ways. And for every single person, it is different. There is mm -hmm. no two grief moments that are the same for people. No. They're so individual. Mm -hmm. I want to jump back to your book for okay. another moment because there's another, there's another piece here that I'd like to break open okay. and hear your, your, your side of. Mm -hmm. Again, one, what I know to be true, you've written, we wrongly assume that our intelligence is greater than, sorry, I apologize, let's do that again. We wrongly assume that our intelligence is greater than that of animals. <laughs> I've had the opportunity and the blessing to look into the eyes of thousands of dogs, not to mention countless other animals. And I know what they, that they are far wiser than we can ever begin to understand. Yes, or right? even imagine. And this is the thing, we want to have an open path of imagination. We want to give ourselves that, the gift of, of imagination and curiosity. Yes, yes. Right, because what if all of this stuff is absolutely real and we're missing it? Right. What if our animals are our greatest teachers and what if they come back to us time after time and lifetime after lifetime, what mm. if? Yeah. Just that openness to be that able openness. to make the decision. Just that that feeling that you can say, thank you. Oh. Thank you for being such an important part of my life. Thank mm -hmm. you for the time that we got to spend together on this plane. And, you know, people talk about Rainbow Bridge all the time, that oh. the dogs go on over to Rainbow Bridge or animals go over to Rainbow mm -hmm. Bridge. I don't know if it's true or not, but what if? What if? What if, once again, that opportunity yep. can come up. There's another piece in here that I want to jump to. Um, since we're talking about passing over, yes. right? You write, your pets already know how to, pro pro to uh, pass over. It's only as hard for them as you make it. Make it easy for them. One of the greatest gifts you can give them is the gift of a peaceful passing. Mm -hmm. Thank your pets. Tell them every single thing that they brought into your life and into your world. <laughs> Get it out. Please do mm. not hold it in or it will haunt you for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. Get it all out of your body, no matter how painful it is to speak those words. Let them know that they can come and visit and that they can come back again if they so choose in full life form or they can stay on the other side and be your guide. This might sound odd, but you will feel the difference after doing it. It's just one of those strange life things you don't know until you know. What a great book. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it was hard to put it down. Like I have it's... to tell you, I was, I'm flipping through it and I'm like, I'm like, that's my friend who's doing you this. Know? So I, I yeah. mean, I, it's, it, for me, obviously it's a privilege because I really, mm -hmm. I know that you're not uh, making this stuff up. I mean, you I have, couldn't. you couldn't make it I couldn't. up. I've, I've watched you with my girls, uh, yeah. you know, over the years. I've watched you with my fish for heaven's I don't even know sakes. how to lie. You don't, I don't know. No. It's uncomfortable. Like it, it, yep. it, 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 it feels in my core if I'm telling something that's not the truth. It's not even a lie piece of it that, yeah. that I sit with when I think about this. I think of make it as leave. that that a lot of people find it awkward to talk about the idea that their pets have moved on the way yes. humans do. And yet we know that when our loved ones pass over, we can feel them around us quite often. Yes. Why would it be any different? Why would it be any different? And, it, and it's not. Like I have, again, I, because I do this work and I do the grief support work and have the background with the training, I've spoken with thousands and thousands of people, yeah. probably about 10,000 people had the yeah. blessing. So I get the stories back all of the time. It's not, this information isn't just through me, it's through confirmation from all of these people saying, 
I felt my dog. I felt them crawl into the bed. I saw their footprints in the snow, or I saw their footprints in the carpet, and I, I felt that bump in the back of my leg when I was doing the dishes. Like, or the things that I'll bring up and they'll say, oh, my dog did that all the time. Or my right. horse did that all the time. Like they know there's these intimate little details, right? So when people recognize that every single time that they're having this big emotional hit is what I call it. Yeah. And you're, you know, you're just doing your thing and all of a sudden you're like, oh, and you're just thinking about your pet. There's a really good chance, and I'd encourage them to imagine that that animal, animal just walked right in the door and is within three to five feet away from them. Yes. And we recognize that feeling. We know it. We've seen it a thousand times, with it, 10,000, 15,000 times with yeah. our animals when they walk in the door. And the feeling we have, like, hey, like we immediately have it. Yeah. But what we are conditioned to re-experience that as is grief. Yes. Because you're thinking about them. You felt them, the hey, and then it's, ah, you go into that grief place. Mm. Instead, I encourage people, and I practice it myself all the time. I'm, I'm not always good at practicing what I preach. We've all been there. <laughs> lots of opportunity to practice, yeah. right? Lots and yeah. lots of opportun opportunity to practice. Stop, say hello, ask what do I need to know. Yeah. Feel that feeling and just acknowledge that what you're feeling before that is, is um, preconceived grief that we've been conditioned to feel. Now is the time for us to turn that around in this time in our lives. And instead of having that conditioning that we're gonna feel grief when we're thinking about our pets or feeling them, we're gonna say hello instead. I love the idea of saying hello. I love the idea yeah. of saying hello. I mean, there have been many times, uh, as you remember, because you've been in my house plenty, yeah. that you know, my I have a set of French doors, and my girls used to slam themselves to get mm. out the door. They could let themselves out. They could let themselves in. They knew how to use those French doors, and I can tell you, more often than not, since they passed on, because it's been a it's been a bit mm. now. It's been a time, and I still hear that thwack that bang at the door. And I have to sometimes shake myself to go, oh no, you're just imagining it. Or yeah. this is just a load of crock or forget about it. To give yourself permission just to acknowledge it in a what if sense, to me makes all the difference in the world. Yeah. Because grief for your pets is real. Oh, it's, you can't avoid it. You can't avoid it. It's real. It's one of the real, most real things that you'll ever feel. You can't hide from it. Yeah. The yeah. relationship is so deeply personal on so many different levels for so many different people. Yeah. Some people, it's the only place they have to safely love. Exactly. And, and you know, when you are safely loving, it's a very, it's a very interesting thing because pets, it's, they don't talk back. They don't, they might give you a wink or a, a little yeah. whimper or something, but, but they're, they just want to love you. That's all they care about. It's true. They have no desire yeah. to talk about you behind your back or they have no desire to get in your Mine way. <laughs> you know, I think, well, if, if I don't give the right cookies, I get a moment or two, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. But they, they just want to be present. They just yeah. want to be and of therefore service. and be of service. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go back to your book here for a okay. second. And once again, uh, you said, uh, what I know to be true, animals love it when we give ourselves permission to evolve. Ah. This is when they get to do all of their satisfying work with us. I mean, I'm loving that idea. Uh, we're meant to evolve. We're supposed to yes. evolve. Can I ask you, I mean, I, obviously I'm being voyeuristic in your life right here okay. in front of all these people that are watching because yeah. I just, you know, have to. Okay. Um, you know, was it one of your dogs that really taught you that more than the others? Because mm. I know you've had a lot of dogs in your life. A few mm -hmm. of them oh, lots, yeah. have been, you know, guided alongside with you for a very long time. Yeah. I would say two. Maya, the one that I wrote the first book about, she taught me not to judge. Don't judge. Just do the work necessary to set yourself up or the animal up for success. Yeah. Stop the judging and the yeah. guilt and all the stuff that we do to ourselves when we're trying to navigate life and children or animals or whatever it is. Like just stop judging and just set yourself up for success or them. Yeah. And then Pepper, he was my, what people call your soul dog, your heart dog, mm. a little palm pug, vicious little beast. <laughs> So vicious, just meant for me, not for anyone else in the world, just meant for that me, is, right? your dog. 17 years for me to teach me, <laughs> to teach me to not be so reactive. 
Yes. He was a mirror, a little redheaded, frisky little mirror of what I was really feeling inside because I've always been yes. a really hot and really reactive. Yeah. Like learning yeah. to get to softness. I had to promise Pepper in his life that I, in by the time he passed, that I would be soft enough for him to not have to be constantly reacting to the world, wondering right. what I was responding to. Because he, there are, they're just like, they're just little sponges. So they're mirroring back whatever's going on for us. Well, and we're their lead, right? Yeah. So they're taking our energy we're their on. Everything. And, you know, I, I, I have been surprised over the years to see how at times, uh, you know, people begin to resemble what their dogs look like. I mean, oh, there's hilarious. all kinds of comics yep. and studies that mm -hmm. have been done on how we look like our dogs. Yep. I'm, I'm having a hard time thinking I look like a Jack Russell, but I certainly have the disposition. <laughs> Just, just a little tiny bit. And the fire. And, <laughs> and the, the fire. fire. And the fire. Jack Russell, yeah. I'm going to bring us once again back to your book. I've got, you know, one or two more quotes I want to share with cool. our audience because I just, I'm, I, I think that this opens up the opportunity for a dialogue, right? Mm -hmm. it and, sure does. and that's really it what sure Act 3 does. is all about. Is let's, yep. let's have a dialogue about the many things that are happening, right? Uh, you said, I feel lost, sadness, and that feeling of emptiness that only breath can fill. Yet I will be the first to say that in every part of the intricate pattern of grief, right on the other side of it is joy. Oh. Curiosity is the secret to life. It rules my thoughts at all times. I, a long time ago, I learned to replace fear with curiosity yeah. and bam, my whole attitude changed to one eager willingness to learn something new through each animal that came my way. Yes. Yes. The curiosity piece is the piece that I think as humans we get stuck on. We either mm -hmm. get to a place where we think we know all the answers or we're in the position where we know we don't know all the answers and we're waiting for someone to teach us. Yes. And so the idea that the curiosity and the teachings could actually come from a four-legged creature. Ah, yeah. Or a little swimming one as my little Alex is there. at this moment, right? Yeah. So, so what does that mean to you? What it means to me is we have to, well, for me in that curiosity, learning about curiosity is when I was diving into letting go of my dog training company in order to do animal communication for right. a living, right? So who am I to use my intuitive skills? Who am I to do that? What if I lead people astray? What if I'm wrong? What if I, what if I, what if? Yeah. And I heard from the dog that I was working with at the time, Michelle replaced fear with curiosity in order to do this. Yes. And everything changed for me. My whole life, I think, changed because I was ruled by fear, as most of us are. Yes. So yes. I've learned to, to, to practice what I preach, right? To practice what I preach all yeah. the time and to practice practicing because we're yes. not doing until we've practiced 10,000 times. That's yes. proven in science, right? So mm. practicing coming to everything, every animal, every situation, this, from a place of curiosity, rather than preconceived notion of what we understand to be true. Yeah. So every time I sit down to do a reading or have a session with somebody, whether I'm doing animal communication, whether I'm writing, whether I'm teaching how to do this, whether I'm doing a grief support service with somebody, I always sit in my chair and I take a deep breath and I just become curious. Yes. Tell me more. I that ask, feeling. what do I need to know right now? Yeah, yeah. Get out of your own way and ask, what do I need to know right now? And it's amazing. Life is so much better and so much more interesting when you get out of your own way. Well, and and I, I mean, I'm, I'm really glad that you said that because it, it's so easy for us to get in our own way. We have plenty of opportunity to do it. Oh, right? all day long. And it, without that practice, it doesn't become habit. And we need yeah. to have this become a bit of a habit for us yes. to have the opportunity to be curious, to say what if, to ask the questions. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We're on the same brain wave. And I I've, love that. Mess. I've helped so many of my own pets pass. We've had 15, yeah. 16 dogs. And so many of my clients and family members, I've had a lot of practice. Speaking of a lot of practice is right on the cover, right? That at the time of this taping, mm -hmm. it was 24 hours ago that you had oh, yeah, 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 yeah. said how much you love your angels and yeah. as they were moving on to their next part of 
their journey. Yeah. Why don't you share with us a little bit about this cover? So the cover is a picture of the two of them, Parker here and Xiao Wei here. Um, so yesterday was the fourth year anniversary, and I always think I'm just going to smooth on through it and might not even notice, like, what did you do that? But for two days, I was really mopey. And even my husband kept saying, what's wrong with you? Like, what's yeah. going on for you? I'm like, I don't know. Maybe it's just this or that or this or that. Avoiding the date, yes. right? Avoiding it. Just not obviously avoiding. Because I didn't, this wasn't painful for me. Helping them pass together wasn't painful. It was beautiful. And I knew for a year they were going together because yeah. I'm, I listen, I pay attention. I've learned through curiosity to pay attention to when your body says, pay attention, something's yeah. changing. So I encourage everybody to do that, of course. So in this experience with them passing, there's this thing called cell memory that every year the date of whatever the trauma was or whether whatever your mind or body perceive as trauma, that you're gonna have some cell memory. So there's gonna be a little shakeup. Yeah. So I spent the day avoiding the shakeup and not practicing what I know to be true, <laughs> like going for a bike ride or doing some meditation or journaling. Yeah. And I could hear her voice and I could hear it. And I was like, oh, I just need to go sit out in the backyard and, and, and listen. But I avoided it because I'm human yeah. and we do because there's something about being in the discomfort that we kind of, it's called, in psychology, it's self-sabotaging. Yeah. So I'm having a bad day and I'm sitting in that. I'm sitting in the bad day, right? I'm like, okay. So instead I flipped the page, flipped the switch, went to act three and literally started doing and practicing what I knew to be true. And then before I knew it, I sat down, I wrote out this beautiful piece through Shao Wei that I don't even know if I'll share because it was just for me. That's right. And sometimes it just is. Sometimes it just is. And then I walked out of the house in this timely manner. And there's this monarch butterfly that had been flitting around our couple of acres that we live on, right in our front yard, right at our window, right on the lavender I'd planted in memory of the dogs, in commemoration of the dogs. And I got some beautiful, beautiful pictures. And I just said, thank you. If that's you, shall we? Thank you. And you know what? That's the perfect segue to the end of our program. Aww. That piece where we get to say thank you. <sighs> you know, I, I, I'm always in awe of learning anything mm -hmm. and everything. And this book, Grieving Gracefully, teaches a lot. And so whether you have a pet or don't have a pet, I think that this is worth the read. And as we go out and say goodbye for today's uh, mm -hmm. episode, I want to leave pe people with uh, one of your final comments towards the end of your book okay. when you say, I marvel at the strength it must take for senior dogs to hold it all up and move forward each day as if they were the strongest gladiators on earth. <laughs> because they are just that. They gladiators. are. <laughs> They're gladiators. With that, thank you, Michelle Jarvis Wanacott. Thank Please, you. I encourage you, go get the book. You can get it on Amazon. You can find it by going to uh, the what we have on the key down below on animalpsychic.com. Is that .ca. right? Or .ca, I beg Canada. your pardon. .ca. Uh, dot ca it's Canada. And go get yourself this book. You will be glad that you did. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks for tuning in.